Hello everyone and welcome to the Kenny Wallace Show brought to you by Jags. As I always say, they are the leader in high performance aftermarket car parts. So remember to go to jags.com for everything and anything you need. Well, this is not our normal Kenny Wallace Show. Charlie is behind the camera today and this is a side of you that sometimes I don't want you to see or let you see. But just like you, there's a lot more to all of us than meets the eye. Uh, some of you know that I do everything, you know, on my own. And sometimes I have Jughead up here or Austin up here, but for the most part, it's only me. So today, uh, I'm going to take you through uh, starting the motor up, putting the tires on, and we're getting ready to go racing in Lincoln, Illinois uh, for Flow Night, the Flow app. So that means Thursday night we're going to be racing. You can get on Flow. You can watch me. And what we're going to take you through the day is, is um, me getting the car ready to load it up. I've already worked on it for two solid days. I got the car ready to go. So tell us what you're doing here, Kenny. So what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm priming the carburetor. Uh, the carburetor is empty right now. There's no gas in it. This carburetor is what we call a Super Bowl. Uh, it's a design by uh, Willie Krupp out of Mount Carmel, Illinois. A lot of you might know that the old carburetor had floats in it. This works on a vacuum system where the gas comes in and then it goes back a little bit. So this carburetor empties out. In other words, the longer it sits, the gas goes bye-bye. It goes back into the, um, into the fuel cell. Sometimes every once in a while, it will uh, go into the motor on top of the pistons. So what I've done is I've filled, these are called bowls. I've filled these up with gas. And now I'm going to, this is something I do. One, two. We're trying to, I'm not going to start up yet. I just have some techniques I do. We're turning the power on. We're just turning the motor on. Uh -oh. That ain't good. Going on here. I think I got a bad starter. Damn it. That's never happened. Huh. I got a loose wire. It, it's just it's a it's a crimped wire. So I will fix that. But I'm gonna get ready. So when the motor does start up, I will uh, I'll adjust the idle. But when the, when the motor when the motor runs, I like to recharge the battery. This motor does not have an alternator. So in other words, when the motor's running, the battery starts dying because we don't run an alternator. We run a 16 volt battery because sometimes running an alternator is a pain in the butt. So, uh, so uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna start the battery yet. I'm not gonna start it. I, li I like to get ready because when a motor starts, I don't want the, shop to get full of carbon monoxide. So there's a routine I go through. Turn, turn the fans on, open the doors. So I got two fans right here, this switch right here, and you're gonna see my ceiling fan start to go. I get a little bit of water ready. So I'm gonna top the, uh, now the, uh, the motor's full of antifreeze, but to just top it off, I, I'll use a little bit of water because it's really getting warm outside right now. But antifreeze is a coolant. A lot of people think an antifreeze is just to keep your motor from freezing, which is true. But an antifreeze is a coolant. It keeps the block clean because, you know, water, water and metal, things could rust inside the block. So uh, we run antifreeze right in the middle of the summer to keep... The water flowing and uh, keep the block from corroding, but also I like to top the water off in the radiator. So, uh, 
I'll grab a funnel. It's clean because I keep everything clean all the time. And then uh, we've already primed the motor. Now we're taking the radiator cap off. Okay. So this thing, this thing will backfire every once in a while. I don't like that happening, but it could do it, might not do it. asking yourself what the hell is that all about this particular motor's got too much compression and a lot of them do that I'm gonna tighten this little wire up it's a starter wire and right now it needs to be tightened up a little bit I'm crimping this wire which is rare, but when I felt it, it was loose. Oh shit, that's what's wrong, it's broke. Well, this is gonna take a little bit. All right. Might need to edit this part. The end of the wire was broke off is what was wrong with it. So, it's gonna take a while. We'll see you in a little bit. So before I go to the racetrack, I'd like to know that my motor runs. We're gonna get the motor warm. I'm not gonna get it real warm. I just wanna know everything's right. Okay, so we primed it, it backfired. That's drama to you, but it's kind of common to me. Um, the reason it backfires is because some, sometimes fuel runs down the intake and gets on top of the pistons. And I spin it over trying to get the gas out of, out of the top of the piston, but sometimes there's just a little bit on there. Sometimes it starts up like there's nothing wrong. And sometimes it backfires like that, and that's no good. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, had a little had a little wire fitting. That's why it was not turning over. I had to fix that. Fixed it. We started the motor up. We checked the water. We warmed it up. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the air cleaner lid on. And oh. Uh, we're gonna tighten it, but we're not gonna go too crazy because because when I get to, when we get to the racetrack, I take it off again to start it up. So we just tighten it a little bit, and uh, we got a little safety pin on there. So that's all good, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn the battery charger on because it's kind of a routine I got. This is a 16 volt battery. It doesn't really look any different, but uh, it's a special charger that all the race teams have. So I want that, I want that at 19. And right now when, when that light gets green, then I'm good to go. So um, yeah. 
So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the hood on. So now I know the motor runs. Runs good. And uh, these are different type race cars, you know. It, it's no different than Tony Stewart or Casey Kane running the World Outlaw Sprint Car. There's so many different divisions in racing, right? So... I always tease with my friends, these are dune buggies with 10 bodies on them. We, uh, my buddy Nick Hoffman builds the frame and cages. And uh, the older I get, I take a shortcut. I let Nick, build, Nick builds the whole thing. So we got rid of hood pins and we just started bolting the, the hoods on. Just easier. That way, in case you bottom out, in case you bottom the hood out, it don't fly out. I, we've gone qualifying before. We go qualifying before you go in the corner, you bury the right front, and the hood pops up. The hood's trying to fly off, and so this is just a little safety measure. Well, I'll be darn you, great time. We got the Orkin man up here. <laughs> Say hello. hello. <laughs> I tell you something that's kind of neat. As I bolt the hood on here, I gotta show you something, it's crazy. Not so much this, but I love my working man because we're out here in the country, right? I gotta show you this, come here. So, we got these little, see these little boxes right here? It, it, there's nothing in there right now, but we have them all over, you know, the entry doorways. Another one here. There's nothing in here. But there's been a couple times, a couple times I come in the shop, saw a snake about 10 inches long in there, and he got stuck, and he died like this. <laughs> and then I found some mice in, mice in there. But uh, when you're surrounded by woods, you, you better have a good sprayer. And I, I've gone to Lowe's. And I've spent $700 trying to do all this stuff myself. The orchid man's got it going on. <laughs> he, he knows all the chemicals to use. I'm no different than anybody. I, I, see, I'm a man. I think I do everything until, until I realize I'm a dumbass and I can't. <laughs> so obviously, I've done, you know, Mean Jughead did all the work, massive amount of work preparing the tires. And um, so this is the easiest part because we're loading up, getting ready to go racing. But I wanted you to see what was up. So, a little bit of tighten. Don't tighten too much. So, so I feel real good. Like I said, the motor's fired up. It's uh, full of water, got some heat in it. Everything looks good. Uh, so now we're gonna put the tires on it. Now these tires, we worked a solid eight hours. We got, the tires are gonna go on the car. In the meanwhile, I got the battery charged and back up. I don't like running an alternator, so there, there's, Ray Bollinger runs an alternator, but you got, you know, I guess it keeps it, he doesn't have to charge his, his battery. The way I look at it, you gotta have an alternator, you gotta have pulleys, it's just, you know, whatever. It's just, you know, you don't, I guess I choose not to run an alternator. So we're gonna put all the tires on it, but then we're gonna check the front toe. I'll show you about that. Sometimes just simply putting on a tire is hard for people, but 
I've been racing so long that you kind of kind of know the ergonomics. Ergonomics meaning what muscles to use, what type of, these are coarse threads and uh, they're pretty cool. So I'm gonna, I used to be a tire changer. Actually, come here, I gotta show you something. 1984, Daytona 500. Look at that. There I am coming around the right front. So uh, that, was, that was 1984. The driver was Joe Ruttman, and uh, Levi Garrett was the sponsor. Sorry, every time I hit him, I'm like, I know how to do that. Were you very fast at that? I was good enough. I was good enough. <laughs> I was going to say more, but it was just that, you know, I didn't start racing until 22 years old because I'm a fabricator mechanic first, you know. I built race cars. People ask me all the time, you know, you're, you're almost 60 years old, why, why do you do this? Well, listen, I know people that just make stuff out of wood. I know woodworkers. I'm like, well, why, why do you, why do you? Why do you make stuff out of wood? They love it. So I love racing. Uh, we're backing it way down this year. We're only gonna run 30 races. Like I said, when we get to the racetrack, we'll use a torque wrench and we'll torque these. And I torque mine at, at 70. And 70 seems to work. Now in the Cup Series, when we ran, you know, the, the five lug nuts, I think we torqued them at what, a, 90, 100? Something like that. Did you like being a tire changer? Yes. Um, you know, I was the crew chief and the tire changer. So in 1984, you had to do it all. You know, you, you see Jeff Hammond, uh, myself, we ended up on Fox TV, Larry McReynolds. Basically, TV's got really good people nowadays that have been there, done that. So Jeff Hammond, Jeff was a crew chief for uh, the great owner, Junior Johnson. His driver was Darrell Waltrip, and, he, and Jeff was a jack man. Well, my point is this. Back in those days, you had to, you had to do five jobs. Uh, nowadays, uh, there's there's more money in sport and there's specialties. You know, they fly the team in. You know, th this team's being flown in on this Sunday. All they're going to do is uh, change tires. Now, Ray Everham started that. So... <laughs> I missed one. Yeah, what happened was when, you know, when Jeff Gordon came along, he, he was good already, but then Everham was an innovator. And Everham said, we're going to pick the pace up. We're going to make sure if Jeff's ever running third or fifth, he comes out of the pits first. So what Everham started doing was hiring ex-hockey players, ex-football players, and it was Hendrick Motorsport uh, that started training pit crews. Years ago, the pit crew was me. I drive the truck, change the motor, call the race, and change the tires as I, sh I showed that picture. Now things are, you know, listen, the more you live, everything gets better. Everything's more perfect. Uh, it's just the way life is. I'm not complaining, it's, it's much nicer. So nowadays, the pit crew team will arrive maybe five hours before the race on a, on a, on a big jet. That way they're all rested up. So they come in, they're all rested up and their job and they get paid and they get bonuses. The better you do, the more money. It's, it's no different than NFL. You, you kick the football and if, if the guy can run it back past the 20, he gets a bonus. And, and I know that because I knew, I knew Jerry Glanville, who used to be a coach of uh, was it Atlanta. Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons, Jerry Glanville. So I went down and Jerry wanted to race. So I knew him and I went to their training camp and he showed me the way those – Football players make bonuses. It's, it's, it's the same way we do it here. The better you do, the more money you make. From Toledo, Ohio. Is he? Mm-hmm.
Jerry Glanville, that dude was incredible. Jerry talked so crazy. Now, I like him, but he said to me, he says, well, I want to run this race here. That'll be my last one. If I break my leg, it gives me time to get healed up to be the, the coach for the Atlanta Falcons. I thought, oh, my, you're crazy. <laughs> we don't ever think about, you know, we hope for the best, prepare for the worst. But Glanville was a... It, I'll be honest with you, I do better on the racetrack when I do a lot of this stuff myself. That way I know what the hell I got, you know. Now you can't do this in NASCAR because it's, it's too competitive. I mean, this stuff's crazy competitive. I mean, it goes back to the old saying Dale Earnhardt Sr. taught me. I mean, Earnhardt used to do this. This is where Earnhardt come from. Metrolina Speedway, Carolina Speedway, dirt racing. So, uh, we've, uh, we've won 106 dirt races. Uh, it's the lower shelves. Or no, that, this is all my NASCAR trophies. The dirt races. Uh, but here's my most prideful wins. These are the hard ones. So, uh. That's right here, yeah, these are the hard ones. When you get down to these trophies here, these are hardcore wins. What that means is most of these trophies on the bottom shelf, like 100 cars showed up, and, and you had to win those races. So, uh, so, yeah. Okay, now, I bought this jack at Harbor Freight. This is one of my favorite jacks. I like this jack a lot because it's got good wheels on it. And I'm gonna let the car down. And this alone is a little scary. Don't let nobody ever tell you, hey, it's what you're always concerned. So I do everything, I'll let you know a little bit about, I'll, I'll let you more than you should know. So I do everything with my left hand because I've got two torn tendons in this one and I've done rehab. So I favor my left arm now. the car down the first thing I do is look at it see if it looked right so yeah I just want to make sure everything's right sometimes you can tell if a car's out of whack if it doesn't sit the way you're used to it sitting so what we're gonna do the, the chassis is already set but we're gonna check the front toe in it means you know the tires I, I want the tires a certain measurement. So I like to get the car seated in. This is just asphalt stuff. This is stuff I learned in asphalt and I can't get rid of it. So I like to get the tires seated in. And then what I'm going to do, I like doing that too. That's the sign of a good mechanic. Watch. Listen, you see that? You hear that? There's no squeaking. That means I have everything properly lubricated. No squeaking. Something squeaks, it's like a fly in my ear. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, and these are little plastic deals. Right now the wheels are hard to turn. 
This way the wheels would be easy to turn. So watch this. Okay, so now, look, see now I can turn the wheel because it's on that plastic. I got a mark on my steering. Could be a little too far. So, because I don't have any help, which is common, I've created a little technique. What I do is I take these little bags. I make sure it's seated in right. It's on the wheel real good. I got my tape measure. So if you come down this way, you can see that this is a straight edge. Now, in NASCAR, they got lasers. You can get away with it being towed out, but I cannot get away with it being towed in. If, you, if it's towed in, it ain't no good. So I make sure my plastic's out of the way. So I, one of the biggest questions I get is, asked is, why do you wrap those tires? So when we prepare them, we, we cut them, we groove them, and there, there's oil in tires. So when we cut them and groove them, there's a theory that you could be exposing them and it could dry the tire out. But really, I like wrapping them so I can write. Well, come here, I'll show you my stagger. Look here. So, I'm gonna run these set of tires in a heat race. This is my right rear, it's 86 and the eighth. This is my left rear, it's 84 and seven eighths. So, that's an inch and a quarter of rear stagger. That means the right rear tire is bigger than the left rear. The right rear tire is bigger than the left rear. So like a cup, the right rear is gonna turn because the right rear is bigger. Here, I'll show you. I'm gonna show you what stagger is. Come here. You see this? This would be the tire. This is the right rear, this is the left rear. Now watch, watch. See how it's going that way? Same thing happens. You put a bigger right rear tire on, smaller left rear, and then it wants to go around. We're making left-hand corners. This is always a two-man job, but not for me. So what I do, it, you, you gotta do twice the camera work <laughs> because it's just me. So what I do is I hook that right there. Yeah, I've hooked it. I'm going to measure the rear. Seventy seven. Oh, hold on. I'm not going to let you know the total number because then you're going to kind of know my tread width. Yes, have a good one. Right, you too, see you later. You. The Orkin Man. The Orkin Man. Signing off. In an average week before you race, how many hours are you putting into the car? It, my dad said a race car's never done. If you want to race, it's just, it's, Excruciating pain. I love, I love the pain. Just, just tearing myself a new asshole every day. Look at me. I'm, I'm wore out. I'm junk. Torn, torn, uh, two torn tendons, cortisone shots in both knees. Got a floater in my left eye. Got a sesamoid fracture in my foot. I've, uh, I've had cracked ribs. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a daredevil, but uh.
when you do all the, it's like Kenny Schrader said. Schrader says he can race longer because he don't do anything on the car anymore. And, and that's pretty much the only way you can do that. Now last year, so in other words, if you don't work on the car, you can race more. Because all you do is drive it. Uh, I do everything. And I am bragging on myself. Because I want you to know I do everything. So, um, like Red Farmer, Red's 90 years old. He's doing something we've never seen done in the history of life. But uh, I won't race that long. So how are you doing this on your own with all that NASCAR money? Well, I'm cheap. <laughs> Hold on one. I'm cheap. I don't want to pay anybody. Okay, so I like this. We are, we are, let me see. We're towed out a quarter. And I like that. Hold on, let me do that again. Yep. 79. Do you still enjoy all this or does it feel like work? I love this. I absolutely eat it up. So, I'm very happy. It's towed out a quarter of an inch, meaning it's towed out a quarter of an inch. That, that, that don't bother me. Uh, you know, some people, run a, some people run dead ahead. Some people run towed out five eighths of an inch. So, uh, my car runs good towed out a quarter of an inch and I don't mind telling anybody that. We got lucky. So, you know, sometimes when you start a video like this, you don't get lucky. But uh, if, if the toe was not right, I would have come right here and I would have, I would have loosened this nut. I would have loosened that nut and I'd have taken that off and I'd adjusted that hind right there. But uh, I'm happy with all that. So... this back okay come here our battery's fully charged let me show you how so that green lights on that means it's floating and it goes down to 17 9 but it'll come up to 19 so now our battery's fully charged So when I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I allowed you to do this because I felt like we were, we were where we needed to be. And now this is elementary. This is just rhythm right here. So, uh, car looks, so, so these, these are just some of the steps I do. You know, this, I'm gonna put the battery charger up. So I went to a cheaper trailer, come on up in here. What I did was I sold my big truck and trailer for $120,000. Uh, it was a Ford F450, 450, not 350. And uh, I sold it to my buddy Tate Balmer up in Wisconsin, Wausau, Wisconsin. Do I miss it? No. It was time to be done with it. Uh, so anyway, what I do is I, I got this small pit cart that I love. I'm proud of it. Look at this, look at this wrench drawer I made. Is that badass or what? I made that right there. So, um, sometimes I take too many steps. If Jughead was here, I'd say, hey, Jughead, go get that battery. So, here's batteries that are fully charged. You know, we got everything we need in here, but I'm gonna go get the battery, and you can walk with me. That way you make the same amount of steps I make. Look how, look how good the car looks. my charging station over here come over here so um I, 
hit my lows right there. I can't let you see it. So anyway, that's charged. What you do is see it's all green. So all my electronics for the race are charged up. So this is a big deal. This is just part of my process here now. So um, we worked hard the last two days. These are my tires ready. Here's a left front, a right front, another set of rears, and a, a hard right rear. That's an M60, which is a hard tire. We're full of gas. And uh, we're full of gas. So this year I have everything patterned to maybe run two nights in a row. If we're gonna run three or four, I gotta come back home. So uh, we're gonna put the toolbox in. Watch your move. So this is the this is the winch. I got it out. Toolbox is ready. I got all the gears. I think I think I got everything I need. Always nervous. Always nervous. I might not have some. I got that NASCAR in me. Oh, what happens if this happens? Well, I have that. The big joke is, the joke for years has been go to Wallace's trailer. He most likely has it. <laughs> I told all my local friends. I told Trev Jacoby. I said, Trev, I, I don't have everything this year. Oh, come on, Wallace. We know you're gonna have it. So this, I made this real neat. It's got to go right in perfect. Yeah. Okay, so then what I do, you got to, I got push pull pins. I made this. Big old horse fly. Where's that? Get it. <laughs> I'll beat that horse fly's ass. That horse fly come around me, I'll kick its ass. That's funny, a horse fly, I think it's gonna whip my ass. I'll whip its ass. I can't get that button to be right. Maybe uh, maybe C Tech call me up. That button, I can't get that button going. All right. So uh we've learned. We got enough towels, we'll fill that later. We learned to do that. No, you know what? I'm gonna fill that up. Watch this. This is just stuff you gotta do. We're about out of towels right here. Towels are a big thing. We love our Scott towels. <laughs> so we're about out. I'll trade out. I'm gonna put these in. Now, stop and think about this. I'm bragging on myself. I ran 76 races last year doing this. Right here, you see. That's why when I, you gotta be hardcore. Like when I hear these people go, our family's going to Six Flags this week. I'm like, what? You mean you're not going to the racetrack? It's not, we're addicted to it, but. We're getting used to this new life. You follow me, Charlie. It's hard to do everything perfect. So these are these are pads. These are awesome. When we go to these old dirty dirt tracks and you're on the grass and you're on the dirt, you kneel on these. So you know, put the car up and these are what you these are awesome. Everybody has these. So uh, I'm proud of my hometown, St. Louis. So I help promote the uh, NASCAR race and. Uh, so when we get to the racetracks, what I do is I we do this. I take this thing, I go, I go like that, and I put this behind my car. 
It's a QR code. That's the new thing in life, QR codes. You take your phone, boom. You can buy tickets through me. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna load up. There, there's a lot more movement. So because, because the front end is so wide, the front of the car is so wide, the car will not fit in the trailer. And no way anybody else's. Nobody else's car will either. So all of us have what we call a load tire. This wheel makes the tire suck in. So you're gonna see in a minute. So I, got, I checked the toe with the proper tires and wheels on. Now put this on. You know, Charlie, you asked me, do I love this? I do love it, but I could race tonight in Spoon River up in Canton, Illinois, I could race tonight. But I've decided not to because I love Spoon River, I love the racetrack. But as I get older, it's not gonna serve me any purpose to run there tonight, even though I run good there, um, always in the top five. Uh, and I've won a couple big races there. Actually, Spoon River, where's Spoon at? Right there, $5,000, what year? 2016. Five grand, that was a uh, AMS race. So anyway, the, uh, the, reason, the reason I'm not racing tonight is because when you head up Interstate 55 and you make a left to go to Spoon, it's two lane roads all the way to Spoon. And it bounced the car out of the trailer. And I just ain't gonna do it. Because, you know, it's just, I'm getting older and I still drive really fast. I drive the car fast, but that that ride takes it out of me. I, everybody tell you, everybody tell you, they love dirt racing, but they ain't gonna drive that far. Everybody's got their deal. Oh, I'm not going there. It's an hour and a half down the road. So I decided not to, by the time I get gas, it's four hours one way. Oh, Wallace, it don't show it. Two hours, 45 minutes. Well, that's bullshit. By the time you get gas, it's four hours one way. Then four hours back, that's eight hours. So tomorrow when I run Lincoln, I'm exhausted. So just, I pick my battles. Now, nowadays I pick my battles. The wild stuff is coming up. How's he gonna get this car in that trailer all by himself? <laughs> it's, it's a sight to behold. I'm a freak. I don't like I don't like to roll this because it it'll get dirty. So I put it in my left arm. So you got the main, you got you got a right front, two spares of fronts. Two good rears and a hard right rear. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Watch this, Charlie. Come here. So, this is my electric winch handle, and I know where it's at all the time. Take that with me. You know, you know, Charlie, as you walk back and forth. With me, you're probably thinking, this guy's nuts. But the great Dick Trickle taught me this. Whatever you do, you got to want to. You got to want to. If you don't want to do it, then you ain't going to be able to do it. So most things in my life I've done by myself because 
I want to do it. But the other people don't want to put that much work in because they're tired. And I, I get it. But, okay, so you're wondering, this is my, this, you're wondering how I'm going to get the car from there to there, right? Watch this. Make sure the power's off. So the power's off, I just checked it. Run these things through my brain. Okay. I got red hot chili peppers on mine. Californication. Okay. So, Charlie, Charlie, you've seen this before. But if I do, get the power. Okay, now. So, it's all about ergonomics. See this foot? All right. So, I'm going to go. Get right here. Watch. Wheels turning too much. if you want to do it bad enough. Okay. So I take the hook Go over here. Okay. All right. All right, I've hooked it up. Take this baby, there's an infrared light up here. So come up here, I'll show you. Sometimes my toolbox blocks it, so watch here. Everybody, everybody got one of these. Okay, so the red light's on, now it works. Now watch this. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the rear of the car, make sure it's where I want it. Come here, Charlie, I wanna, I wanna teach you something about, watch this. So the car, I loaded the car in there, I got it in there about an inch off, but watch this. So the, the, the ass ends too far that way. I'll wait till it's off. Now watch this. I want I want the car to go over that way a little bit. Now watch what I do with the jack. Watch. See the car moving to the right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put this up. Come with me, Charlie. We're gonna tie the front down. This is therapeutic for me because I like Charlie to see what I do. <laughs> I make sure that that's free. All right, put that back in there. So, I got this marked left front.
So, this is the way I tie my car down. Always nervous about it. Looks good. So, that's, that's tight. So, the left front's tied down. trash can. I forgot to move it. Do you always try to do this day before the race? I always, I always tried to load the day before the race when we're going out of town. So we're, we're, we're kind of going out of town. So this is, this is two hours. If I drive straight to Lincoln and don't stop, it's two hours and 15 minutes. So, um, I like to, so I told the boys, I told the boys, I said, be here at 11 o'clock tomorrow, we'll load up. Well, it's, it's one o'clock right now, I'm done. So, just load up, load up. I don't, I don't mean, I'm not, I don't want them to feel bad, but when they get here in the morning, they're going to be happy. Because they don't got to load up. These are new ratchet straps, by the way. Is this your only race this weekend? No. I'm going to race. I'm going to race four nights in a row this week if I have enough energy. Dang. Tonight, Lincoln. Or no, tomorrow. Thursday, Lincoln, Illinois. Friday night, Brownstown, Illinois, the Brownstown Bullring. Saturday, Peebly, Missouri, and Sunday, Quincy. You know why? I thought you were retired. Well, I can't race that much. And <laughs> I got great sponsors. So when I can race, I got to get it. Because I've only raced three times this year. That. Everybody's in shock because they're like, "Oh, Wallace ain't gonna be able to run only 30 races because they know I'm a racer." They know they don't. A lot of a lot of people quit jacking with me, so because they know. Like to get the ratchet strap to where it's got stuff. I feel good about it. But we'll, sometimes we get down the road, we'll check everything. Okay. All right now we gotta go to the rear. tie the rear of the car down. So when you see me on all those pretty videos and when you see me on, saw me in Fox Sports all those years, that's because I had to take a shower and shave. This is the real me. The reason I say that, oh, okay. So, the reason I always remind everybody is because you know they don't know. You know, 
when you see great athletes like Michael Jordan or whoever it is, you never saw them working. You just saw them in the game. All right, so I try to make this to where people can help me. They know everything that. So here's the pins. Here's a reminder to always put the bolt in the left side door because my car won't load up if I got the door bolted in. So these little pins right there. So now the jack's all good. Jigs. 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 The leader in hyper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we got is we got a hydraulic lift. You saw in the trailer that red unit, it lifts the car up. So when we get to the track, so this is, this is the hydraulic unit. I used to lift it up. It's very heavy, but thank you to Quick Lift. They sent me one with a handle this year. Everybody's got a handle except me, because I'm a dumbass. So this year I took my used parts and put it in this container here where, where it's got a handle. Way better, so go like this. I like to, uh, this thing can roll back and forth. So I'm thinking this year maybe we put it on an angle like this, maybe. Like this, you know? Maybe like that. It'll ride right there real good. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, put these up. So, the smart ass in me is coming out right now, so be ready. When you all sit on these timelines and you run that mouth, <laughs> and I know you're sitting on that couch, you, can't, you cannot hang with me. There's no way. You won't do it. You'll do a little bit of this. You go, oh, I got to go home. My wife's calling me. And that was easy because all I did was let you see me load up. Now, yes, <laughs> I'm just saying that's why. I pretty much don't even argue with anybody. The comment section. So the comment section in social media is one of the most fascinating things in life. It's a big thing nowadays. Everybody looks at it. Because they wonder, are you going to criticize me? And then I used to argue with them, just tell them to go themselves, things like that. But uh, <laughs> until you do all that, you got, you, 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 got, you got to be respectful to people. Until you do all that by yourself, and I'll be 60, you got to be careful. You just tame, tame that mouth down. Simmer down. Simmer down. So, uh, take this. It's going to go up in here. Like that. Going to go get the cooler. We checked everything off yesterday pretty much. The last two days. Like I said, Jughead's been up here helping me the last few days. But we do, we do make a list. And uh, so I told J Jughead, says we need to stop by Gators and get some of that spray to keep the dirt from sticking to the car. I said, well, make me a note. So he did stop by Alligators to get spray on the way to Lincoln. Here's my, uh, Charlie, go ahead and let everybody see what's up. It's fine with me. I, I don't really care. So that's the way we do it. So, come here, I'll show you something. Look at this. You see this? Every good racer knows to turn their air compressor off. So here's my air compressor, okay? You turn it off. I'm gonna tell you a story about turning it off. So Shel all, all the teams stop here. Sheldon, Holland, Child, 
the Moyers, you know, you, you name it, everybody stops here. So Sheldon was telling me, some guy up there, part of the Pennsylvania Posse, they didn't turn their air compressor off and they went on the road and one of their airlines broke and the air compressor ran for a day and a week and melted up some stuff and burnt the whole garage down. Scares me to death. So we always turn the air compressor off when we get ready to go out of town. So we're gonna start shutting the shop down. The, so the point is this, you wish you had a shop like this, but did you work your ass off to get a shop like this? So, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of things in defense mode, right? So I, because I, I, uh, I know what people are asking, right? Uh, I know, I know the things people are asking. You know, the number one thing is, man, you know, he got all that money. Well, I worked my ass off for it. So you, you got it, you know, my, my wife and my kids, they sacrificed, but they got everything they want. They got everything they want because we worked our ass off. And, you know, sometimes you can try as hard as you can try and you might not get it. I got lucky and uh, grew up right here in Arnold, Missouri. And uh, I was a crew chief mechanic first, as we showed you the pictures. And uh, through a newspaper route, the community press, and, um, yeah, ain't that something? Yeah, every, you know what, uh, Chip Ganassi gave me that. They made that whole thing like that. But I think the reason I tell everybody my story is because I want everybody to be happy with themselves. So here's the way we made it. Take 30 seconds to tell you. My dad said every Tuesday night, throw the community press newspaper in Creve Corps, Missouri. We threw it. We kept passing this Penske truck and trailer. We finally stopped about the eighth time, Rusty said, we're gonna stop there, we're gonna stop there. So we stop. It ends up being an introduction to Don Miller. Don Miller worked for Roger Penske. Don tells Roger Penske, hey, you gotta let this Wallace kid out of St. Louis. Sure enough, Rusty ends up driving for Roger Penske at Atlanta, runs second in his very first race. Yes, Rusty Wallace ran second in his very first race to Cale Yarborough. And uh, the rest is history. Now, there was a lot of rough roads in there. Like, he never raced a NASCAR again, but eventually, uh, yeah. So, a lot of people want to know, these are 200s. They're just bifocals. Uh, I need them. I can see everything, but when stuff's right here, I, I got to have them. I got them all over the shop. They're everywhere. I buy, like, 12 at a time. So, this area right here is my most important tool. So I, instead of putting them in a toolbox, I just, I have them right here. I use those tools 24 seven. My, my buddy, Billy Smith, Billy Smith said, you know, Herm, if you went to the racetrack, all you need is a pair of three quarter inch wrenches. <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but if everything goes good, it's true. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is I, this is just my part of my being clean. I take my broom. I'll take my broom, I'll run it. I'll wash my hands and uh, talk about a balanced life. Kim said that I need to watch Jet this evening, one of my grandbabies. So, so I'm thinking about that right now. But uh, let me see here. It is pretty amazing though that if you get all your leverage down, you'd be surprised how many things you can do by yourself. If I didn't have that winch, I'd have to start the car up, destroy the clutch, it'd be junk. See, we started our cars up years ago and loaded them up because we had to. Now you go up to Harbor Freight and buy yourself a $150 winch and you save your motor and you save your clutch I know people that have burned the clutch out of their cars loading it up. I'm too cheap to buy. Look here. I take that back. To, I, I take that together. I think I, I think I need to go get me a new one.
Nothing, nothing worse than coming back from a race, opening the door, want to unload the car and the shop's junk. You're like, oh, I got to clean up so I can unload the car. So, yeah. I do want to say this. A lot of people say, where's your help? You can afford it. I can. I can afford to hire anybody I want, but here's the problem. There ain't nobody. Those days are gone. Times have changed for this reason or that reason, but there's nobody to hire. Even if you hire them, you got to watch over them. They don't have the same passion you got. So I just do it myself now. And I'll have Austin, who's awesome. I love Austin Harris. Love him with my life. I love Frankie, the legendary Jughead. And without those two boys, it's going to be hard. But, but they're going to go racing with me. But let me tell you what, I taught those boys a lesson. Not those boys. I taught the racing world a lesson a couple years ago. I showed up at the racetrack by myself and ran third in the A-Main. I had Tony Jackson back me into the pits. Tony remembers that. They all staring at me. I said, let that be a lesson to all of you. If you keep it up, I'll keep coming to the track by myself again to make you look bad because you got helpers. See, you guys think you're going to get one over me. It's like, Wallace coming to the track by himself. I'm like, no, you look bad because you got people with you. I'll do it all by myself. Don't test me. <laughs> that's, that, that's that prick coming out in me. Everybody's got that prick side. Don't let them, don't let them fool you. All right. I want to see a little more dirt. Can't take it. Okay. So, uh, with the thought of racing a little more this week, I, I, those tires there, they're ready for Friday. If I need them. So right here. All right. Charlie, I think we've done it, buddy. Yes, but, sir. You know, uh, might as well, might as well uh, close the doors. Oh, Wallace got electric doors. <laughs> hey, I'm out of practice. I'm out of practice. So, gotta have the cooler. If I didn't have the cooler, Jug had to be pissed. Where's my water? So we'll stop at the mobile one on the run and we'll ice her down. And I told, when I came from NASCAR and I started racing, I never raced local in my life until I started running dirt. Well, I was already in NASCAR and I started going to the racetrack with my guys here. And Billy Smith was my crew chief. And Billy, Billy always made a big deal out about ice. We gotta stop for ice. Finally, one day I said, Billy, what is your deal with ice? You're always wanting ice. He looked, he looked at me and says, do you want hot water? <laughs> <laughs> but don't kid yourself. Schrader's got an ice maker in his shop. Ice is big in dirt racing. Hey, Charlie. The dirt racers will love this. Top three sayings in dirt racing. Stop and get ice. How many cars were there? Because if there's not enough race cars and you won the race, well, then it wasn't deserving. Mm -hmm. Well, really just top two, I think. A add whatever else you want on there. <laughs> uh, but you, you could win a good race, and the first thing somebody's going to ask, how many cars were there? I'm like, shut the... <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't control it. All right. I've done, here's the deal. I've done my very best. So whatever happens, happens. Jughead. Jughead. He, I'm a, uh, so the generator's up here. Come here. This is the newest thing going. $850 generator from Harbor Freight. I had a Honda generator that I bought from Munganass up on Lindbergh. I paid... 
I was a dumbass. I paid almost $7,000 for a Honda generator. Because at Jacksonville, Illinois, Schrader said to me, damn, that generator's loud. So my dumbass went and bought 6,500 watt. But anyway, these are the best thing going. This is the best invention. Harbor Freight. What is it, 3,500? Come here, Charlie, look. Everybody's running them. It's a new hot thing in dirt racing. Michael Long's got one. Joe Rudy's got one. Hell, I could go through about six of those for the price I paid for that, that generator. Now, hold on. I know you can buy a generator for 800 bucks, but it goes like this. <laughs> Let's go wash our hands, Charlie. Let's do it. My phone is probably close to dying here. Okay, people say to me, hey, Herman, how long you been here? Okay, Charlie, I'm going right back in the same spot. My hands are dirty. Thanks for following along. Love you all.